Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about control systems topics and we continue with the subject of body plot and then from there the transfer function. So what we have is now a situation and a special situation where we have a body plot with a peaking. So let's look at it. The situation is follow. We have this the body diagram is shown here and as you can see we have a peaking in our body diagram. So how can we now determine the transfer function when we have a peaking in our body diagram? And that is the subject of this example. So let's again zoom in in this uh, body plot for the phase and for the gain. Okay, what you see is let's start from the gain first. So we have the gain of 0 dB at relatively low frequencies and we can assume that this will again stay at approximately 0 dB for very low frequencies and also at DC. So 0 dB for DC. That's actually our first observation. And this will then start to increase and reaches a maximum value and then from there it will uh, again decrease to lower values for gain. As you can see from the phase, the phase is 0 radians per second for 0 degrees for 0 dB. So that means there is no uh, sign inversion in our gain. So this gain is 1 as a scalar, so it will stay 1 and not minus 1, for example, if you have a phase uh, of minus 180 degrees. This uh, peaking here occurs at a frequency of 10 to the power 1, which is 10 radians per second. And we will use that in our analysis for setting up the transfer function. Which also see that the phase is uh, decreasing from 0 degrees all the way to minus 180 degrees for, uh, for, for the larger frequency. So we can assume that this will, of course, approach minus 180 degrees for infinite frequency. So you can see that this is a second order system and there is a complex pole or pair of complex pole due to this gain peaking. So let's look at it step by step for the gain and then for the complex poles. So the first asymptotic line we will draw for the gain, that is the first step that you can see in a red line. So there is a red line that will determine just our gain. So just actually confirmation of what we have discussed shortly. Now let's make a vertical line for our peaking and determine then from there again in precise form our frequency of peaking. Okay, this is 10 dB per, sec uh, per second. And we have a gain peaking, as you can see here, around uh, maybe a little bit less than 15 because this is 10, this is 20, so it is around in the middle, but it is a little bit less. So I can assume it is 14. So I go for 14 dBs for the gain peaking. So we have a gain peaking of 14 dB at 10 radians per second. All right. The next step is actually using this data, we will now determine step by step our transfer function in the following analysis. So let's move on. So we have here our body plot again with our DC gain and also our peaking, the line for peaking, and we have here 14 dB of peaking and at 10 radians per second. So let me write down the necessary elements for our uh, analysis. So we have a gain, which is 0 dB, and in scalar form it is 10 to the power 0 divided by 20, which is equivalent to 1. And there is a phase shift at that situation. So there is a gain, and that will be 0 degrees. So this will happen. So this is at omega equals 0 radians per second. And this will result that the KDC, which is our DC gain, is just 1. So that's actually our first parameter for our transfer function. Now, this is uh, the first dot. And the second dot is the pair of complex poles. So pair of, pair of complex poles. So let move, let's move on to that. Now we can see from this, there is a peaking here at 10 radians per second, and the peaking has a value of 14 dB. So let me, let me write it down. So gain peaking, gain peaking of 14 dB at 
10 radians per second. Now, the next step is actually using the graph here on the right side. So this is a, a normalized graph. As you can see here, there is the omega divided by the natural frequency. And at that value, for example, at 1, you can see the peaking for several values of the damping ratio. So, for example, at 1, you have, uh, you have no uh, peaking. But after, for example, 0 0.6, you will see some peaking and, and then it starts to increase if you decrease your value of your zeta. Now, if I look at my peaking, it is just 14 dB. We already determined that. And if I can see here from this plot, that corresponds to actually a zeta of 0 0.10. So it is very close to 0 0.10. So let's take that. So what you can say is the following. From the graph, so I will make uh, uh, another color. So from the graph, on the right side, what we have is from the graph. You see that zeta is 0 0.1 or 0 0.10 for 14 dB peaking or gain peaking okay what you also need to know is what is actually the omega n so omega n, omega divided by omega n which is normalized and that is for us now 10 radians per second so omega n is 10 radians per second so omega n omega n will be 10 radians per second what we now do next step is i will move to the blue color what we now do is we will use the quadratic uh, form of this pair of complex poles so what is the standard form of the uh, pair of complex poles so this is the term we will use in our transfer function it is one plus two times the zeta times s divided by the omega n plus s divided by the omega n and the quantity squared. Uh, this is a term which you can use if you have a gain peaking in your body plot. Now I have now determined the omega n and also determined the zeta so I can substitute the values in this expression. So what we have is 1 plus 2 times 2 times 0 0.1 times s divided by 10 and then plus s divided by 10 and a quantity squared all right now let's move on to our transfer function how is that uh, what is the template for that so transfer function that is our next step so the transfer function so if i continue again now with black what we have is then gs is of course our dc gain in this case we have a dc gain and then number uh, the product of the poles will be play product of the i mean the zeros will be placed at the numerator but there is no there are no zeros so this will be just one for the numerator so if i have that i will place a one here now I will place the quadratic term here in the denominator. So that will be 1 plus 2 times the zeta times s divided by the omega n plus s divided by the omega n quantity squared. So if I now substitute the values, I have a dc gain kdc of 1. So this is 1. This is 2 times 0 0.1 for the zeta. This is 10 and this is also 10. So let's move on with this analysis. All we have is then g of s would be 1 times 1 over 1 plus 2 times 0 0.1, which is just, of course, 0 0.2. And then s divided by 10. And this will be s divided by 10 quantity squared. I can simplify this, of course by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 100. Why? Because if I work this parenthesis out, I will get an s squared divided by the 100. And if I want to get rid of this uh, fractions, I can multiply the 
numerator and denominator by 100. So that's actually what I do. So the next step is multiply the numerator and denominator by 100 will be 100 divided by 100 plus and this is now 10 times the 100 it will be i mean 1 over 10 times 100 will be with just 10 and then 10 times the 0 0.2 is just a 2 so we will have here 2 s and then plus s squared now sometimes we will write down in a different form we start with the higher order and then we will move up, move to the lower orders. So it's actually just a general form. So S squared plus 2S plus 100. And this is actually our value or transfer function for this system. How can you verify uh, some specific uh, uh, values in here? You can check the DC gain. If you substitute here in S is equal to 0, you will get 100 divided by 100 because these two terms will disappear. They will be 0. So you will have one and one is of course zero db so that was the check how can you check the peaking what you can do is you can verify this by comparing this to the uh, standard model of the second order system and check the omega and oh no so the zeta so i will leave that details out and what you now have is the transfer function for this system so that's actually for this exercise this can be of course more complicated if you have of course a zero or a phase inversion for your gain I hope this clarifies the situation for these uh, kind of border plots. If you have a question, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible and see you next time.